Hey, good morning, Journey Family Church. Thanks for tuning in to another week of Online Church. Thank you for coming back and joining us this week. I want you to do something. Pause this video real quick and send this link to a friend or family member and have them join us this morning. We have a powerful morning in store, let me tell you. A couple things before we get started. Number one, there is no not so spooky this year, so we don't have the big white tent and the games and all the fun that we've had the last few years uh, due to COVID-19. But instead, we're doing a trunk or treat event. So if you're interested in helping out, we need trunk or treaters who, uh, if, if that's you, you're willing to open up the trunk of your car and decorate it and hand out candy to the kids as they come, or you can donate candy for that night. And all you have to do is either you can mail it in, you can send it in, you can drop it off here at the church, whichever one you wanna do. Uh, there are two opportunities there, so we invite you to join us for that. Also, Journey Kids is looking for more helpers. So if the, you felt like the Lord has put it on your heart to serve with, with the kids, then here's your opportunity to do it. All you have to do is contact Miss Pam at this email or you can call the church office and we'll get you plugged in for that. Lastly, we are moving. We are not under the big white tent after this morning. This is the last morning under the big white tent. We are gonna move up to the old Family Dollar building just behind Village Market. So I wanna lay out a few things for you. Number one, there are two services, one at 9 a.m. and one at 11 a.m. 9 a.m. is a mask required service. So you have to wear a mask the whole time during service at our 9 a.m. service. 11 a.m. is mask recommended. So that is optional to you, whichever one you want to do. So if you have been feeling like uh, maybe you didn't want to join under the tent because you're a little uneasy. We do have that mask option for you now to join us. Um, but if you don't feel comfortable coming at all, don't worry because online church is still going to be happening. We're still going to have sermons uploaded for you. So you're safe in tuning in here on YouTube uh, for the next few weeks, for the next few months, uh, and so on. So with that, let's get in the message. Glorify, glorify the name of 
At this time, we're gonna go ahead and pause and go into our time of offering. Again, we wanna say thank you so much for faithfully giving the way that you have. And uh, the Lord has just been moving in a mighty way here at Journey Family Church. And uh, the way that he's just provided and cleared the path for us to move up to the Family Dollar Building. And on top of that, getting into our, our new building at some point, uh, he's just been working. And so all glory to God for that. If you're interested in giving or feel inclined to give, here are your two options. You can go on our website, www.journeyfamilychurch.com backslash give, or you can mail in to this address here. Uh, either one is, is acceptable, so uh, if you feel inclined, please do so. So with that, let's go ahead and pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for this time just to meet together, Lord, and grow closer to you. Father, we pray for this offering, Lord, that everything given is used for you uh, in a mighty way to further your kingdom, Lord. Um, I pray that you use this uh, giving, Lord, just to continue to clear paths and, and open uh, doors, Lord, for us just to continue to push on, to, to lead people to Christ, to give people Jesus, Lord. So we pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So this might be a newer song um, to several of you. It's on, uh, I know, CSG and a few other stations. Um, and upon hearing it, I could really relate um, to, to the lyrics of at some times in life when things go on that don't maybe go our way and they rock our world and shake us up a little bit, we question, um, is God still good? And sometimes we don't feel as close to the Lord um, but he's always right there, and he's, he's whispering. He's sometimes shouting at us, hey, it's going to be okay. Um, I'm going to carry you through this because I am still good. Um, and it's okay to have a question. I know for my personal walk, when I have had questions, I've grown so much because I've, I've dug deeper. And the Lord has used that in my life to stretch me and to um, draw me even closer to his presence. And so just as you listen to the lyrics of this song, um, join us if you would like to in singing as well. Um, just, I pray that they that they sink in and that you know that it's always going to be okay and that God is always still good.
Though the mountains may be thrown into the sea, though the ground beneath my crumble.
Good morning, Church Online. It is so good to, to be a part of church with you today. Um, it has been awesome to be a part of Church Online and to see the different people that chime in, that say good morning and welcome. Um, just a couple shout outs, because uh, I've seen Shauna on there, Brenda, Tammy, uh, Linda. I'm trying to think of all the names that I've seen on there. Um, Thank you so much for joining. And for other people that I don't even know who you are, thank you so much for joining in on Church Online. Um, it's awesome to be a part of you. And whenever, you know, don't be afraid to, to either write in that live chat or to reach out to us through email um, or going through to our website to figure out how to contact with us. Um, let us know how this is affecting your life. Um, how is the Lord dealing with you? How is he showing you different things? through these sermons as we go along. Um, it really encourages us and helps us. And, and it's awesome to see the community that we have uh, from a church online format. We thank you so much for joining with us um, in this. Uh, before I get going, I just want to pray before we start this service. So pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak to these people right now, Lord. I thank you for the different re reminders that you give us. Lord, I pray that you would be glorified through this message, Lord, that um, you would just get all the praise and all the honor. Lord, I pray right now that you would open up our hearts, Lord, that you would allow us to put ourselves aside and to just fully look unto you and what it is, of what, what molding and shaping do you have for us this morning, Lord? We thank you for this. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So again, good morning. Um, I've been going through different things. You know, we all go through different things in life, and I wanted to be able to come and, and just to kind of be real with you guys because I don't think there's anything better than being real of what we have. And I, number one, I thank Pastor Gary for his transparency every week of just telling it how it is and what he's going through. And he's not afraid to say the struggle, but also what I love is to see the victory in what Jesus Christ is doing. You know, it just doesn't leave you at the, the problem, but gives a solution as well. And I just want to thank Pastor Gary and Tina for their service here to the church and, and what they do and what their family does. And um, it, it means a lot, you know. Um, what I want you to think about right now, if you could give one message out, what would it be? So think about that. Let's boil this down, okay? You have one message that you could share with your closest friend, your closest person, but you only have one message to share, one thing to share. What would it be? And then the, the side part is, is how long would it take you to prepare that message for that one thing? And it is really convicting when you look at that. I know it's convicting for me. As I look at this and I go, man, I got one shot to give a message to somebody. And, and if I don't know the time frame, when I want to be ready at any moment to be able to give that message, that one message. And of, of course, for me, that message that I want to give is the message of Jesus Christ. I think that's the most important message that I could, could give to anybody is Jesus Christ. And the thing that is convicting is, is that on the top of my mind? Is that on the top of my priority list to give the gospel to those around me, to give the gospel to even people that already know the gospel? Is that my first thing? And it drew me to a conclusion, a conclusion of his life is full of choices. What are you choosing to do, okay? And out of that, that choice, out of the things that we choose to do, there's an overflow. There's an overflow that comes out of us, okay? And it, it, let's break it down, you know, think about it. If I asked you, you know, how are you doing this week? A lot of people would say this word, right? I'm busy. What does that mean? Well, if we look at this, okay, so if it is a, a choice to be busy, okay, it's a choice, 
So what is my overflow of being busy? So my, my choice to do those things of, um, let's say I'm, I'm, I'm working all the time. I'm doing all these different things. I've got all these different project, projects. I'm just go, 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 go. Well, my overflow of busy is being burdened with all these things, right? You kind of see that. Now, what about with, man, I'm, I'm tired. I'm just tired, okay? So if we look at being tired, okay? That's my choice. My choice is to be tired. My overflow of being tired is um, I'm just, I am wore out. That's my overflow is I'm wore out because I got all these things going on or, or maybe I'm not taking good, good health of my body. I'm not taking the time I need to sleep. I'm not taking the time I need to accomplish these tasks, okay? So my choice of doing these things has now created an overflow within my life. So now what you see out of me, what is coming out of me is I'm tired, I'm busy, I'm wore out, I got all these things going, right? Kind of see where I'm going with this. Now, very seldom is the person that you say, hey, how are you doing? And they say a word like this, I'm blessed. Well, wait, what, what does that mean? Well, the, the choice is that even though I'm busy, even though I have all these other things going on, I'm choosing to look at what the life that God has had, has for me and I am blessed and out of that overflow comes something totally different than me being busy, worn out, tired, and, and stressed. And that really challenges my life because if you have one message to give at any moment to give this message, if you're looking at it from a blessed perspective, my choice is looking unto Jesus the author and the perfecter of my faith. If I'm choosing to do those things, the overflow is now something totally different. And I can work out of that overflow because of the choices that I've made earlier on in that day, earlier on in that week, earlier on in my life. And everything stacks up onto that, okay? These things just don't happen overnight. It's not natural for somebody just to give up and to give a message on a moment's notice, because guess what? Even if it is, it's still out of an overflow of what has been going in them is what is going to come out of them. And when you see those connections, it, it, it's convicting. It's convicting to me. You know, I, look, I think about even this message that I prepared. You know, how much more time could I have spent doing something else because the overflow is just natural? And that's just being honest. Over, the overflow should be natural by our choices of what we choose and how we choose to follow Christ. And it's, it's all connected. It's all interweaved. It's all intertwined together. Um, and like I said, that, that one message, that one message that, that I could give to anybody is that overflow of Jesus Christ, the overflow of, of Jesus Christ that he's done in my life. And I just want to really dive into that because in the world that we live in today, there's so many different things. There's so many different voices that, that are out there. And, uh, and some of them are things that, you know, right now you might be feeling, you might be feeling useless. You might be feeling wore out. You might be feeling abandoned. You might be feeling like you're no good, that you're not worthy, you're not worth it, you're not loved. There's all these things. And I don't know where anybody's at, and I don't know how anybody's feeling, but I can tell you that I know that in those moments of life, of not knowing, not understanding, just all the questions that can race through your head, which we all go through at different points of life. We, at, at, nobody can say at any moment that, that we always just think that everything is great and perfect and good. And No, there, there's different things that come up. But the one thing that I do know that is true is that God never changes. And when you feel that you're not worthy, I'm here to tell you that God is telling you that you are worthy. When you're, you feel like you're unloved, I'm here to tell you that God is telling you that you are loved. There is, there, there's so much more than what you're feeling right now. God has so much more for you, but it's a choice. It's a choice of, of going in 
to, to, to meet with the Father, to have that personal relationship with the Father, to talk about these different things that you have going on in your life right now. And that's my message to you, that one message I could give out is, do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? I'm not asking you, do you believe in God? I'm not asking you if, if you know who Jesus is. I'm asking you, do you have a personal relationship with him? Because none of us are, are righteous, right? By our own standings, we, we are all sinful, which means we've done things that are against the Lord. Every one of us, I have, Pastor Seth has, Pastor Gary has, none of us, is, of us is perfect, but the thing that we stand on is the thing that you see behind me is the cross. And, and without Jesus Christ and the love that he has for us for dying on the cross for my sin, for my guilt, for my unworthiness, for, for me and, and just the rottenness that I can be in my, my human flesh, without that cross, I have no right standing with Jesus. I have nothing to, I have no good in me. The only thing that is good that comes out of me is Jesus Christ. And that's what we're trying to say is that none of us is righteous, not by anybody's standard, okay? We have lied, we have cheated, we have stealed, we have done all those things. But Jesus Christ, God loved us so much that he sent his son. So no matter how you're feeling, there, there, is, there is nothing that you could do to take away, to get this love because it is there for you. Jesus Christ, Jesus, God's son, came, lived as a man, as a, a sinless, perfect sacrifice for us. And if you want to accept that, that pure sacrifice is by believing in him, that Jesus Christ died, died on the cross and that he rose again on the third day and that you can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And when you walk into that, that is how you become to see this overflow that I'm even talking about. When you choose to follow Christ, that is how you get this overflow. That's how you get joy that doesn't make any sense to anybody else. That's how we're able to go through moments that, that don't, like, how can we do this? Well, it's because of Jesus Christ. It's nothing within me. It's nothing because of any outside force. When I feel unloved, I go to the one that loves me. When I go, when I feel unworthy, I go to the one that, that says that I am worthy. When I don't know what in the world is going on, I go to the one that holds the world in his hands. And that's what we have to be doing. We, we can't look to anybody else. We can't look to our friends. We can't look to our family. No, we need to look unto Jesus first. It's Jesus first. You know, one thing that even my kids know and my wife know, we, we, it's this thing in our family that we know. We love Jesus first and then family. I love my kids, but my kids know that I love Jesus first. And that's a choice. That's a choice that I make. And out of that overflow, I hope they choose Jesus first as well. And they see that and they, they go along, they follow that, that, that way. I, I want to just stop too and, and talk, talk about this. Of Salvation should be the one message that should be on our heart on a daily basis. Number one, because of what Christ did for us. But number two, if I believe he can do it for me, I believe he can do it for you. So I, should be, I should be ready to share that with other people. There's a story I read not so long ago, about a week ago actually. It was in an R.A. Torrey book. And it was of Moody. Moody was one of the greatest evangelists. There was nothing special about this guy at all. He just loved Jesus. His choice to follow Jesus created an amazing overflow. Okay? And in that process, he said, Lord, I give to you that I will speak to one soul a day about you, about the gospel, okay? So one night, it got to be the point where it was past 10 o'clock. It was getting close to 11 o'clock at night. He had not met with anybody yet. He had not been able to share the gospel with anybody. And he's thinking, oh, no, this is going to be the day that I don't get to share the gospel. And as he's driving, he sees a man underneath a, a, a lamppost, okay, of a street light. 
he pulls over and he sees the man and he just says, how are you in the Lord? And starts giving him the salvation about Jesus Christ. And the man just kind of pushed it off and went from there. Now, the next week what happened was that guy that Moody shared with he found a high up person in the business world, okay? And he went to him and he said, there is something wrong with Moody. He can't get Jesus off of his mind. He went and he saw me at 11 o'clock at night underneath a, a, a street lamp and was telling me about Jesus. He is so zealous for Christ, he is missing it. He is, he is pushing people away from, from the gospel. And that businessman really took it to heart and he called Moody. He called Moody up and he goes, hey, Man, in a sense, you need to knock it off. You need to watch it, okay? You're so zealous for Christ. You're, you're so crazy about Jesus Christ. You can't get him off of your mind that you're bothering people at 11 o'clock at night. Tell them about Jesus. And, and that word just really started hitting Moody, hitting his heart. And to the point of thinking, man, am, am I being too zealous for Jesus? Am I, am I being so so clouded with salvation in a sense that I'm, I'm missing people where they're at. And that struck me, that struck me hard to think that even Moody might even have a thought of that into his heart and how that could affect him and affect the ministry, okay? A week after that phone call from that businessman, from the plea of the guy that was underneath the light post, Guess who knocked on Moody's door? The guy underneath the light post. And he said, I don't know what is wrong with me. I haven't slept since you have talked to me. You have to tell me who this Jesus is. That hit my heart in a way of saying, don't ever stop of giving Jesus Christ to other people. No matter where they're at, no matter where anybody else is at, God is dealing with them in a special way, okay? Let the Lord deal with them. They can say those things. Hey, you're so, you're so crazy. You're so in love with God. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, that's between them and God. Let it be between them and God. Don't, don't take that extra burden on them. Oh, did I do it right? Did I say it wrong? Did I do this? Did I do that? No, you give them Jesus. You give them the overflow of what you're following Jesus. You give it to them. Let that, it's between them and the Lord. And the Lord and his grace and his mercy might bring that guy back to you. It might bring it back to somebody else. And then they end up accepting Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. I, I can tell you there's, there is time after time that I've, I feel like I've been blue in the face telling somebody about Jesus Christ. Okay? Matter of fact, I worked with a guy for almost a whole year. And I remember I was, I was trying to do everything right. I was trying to just show him Jesus through who I was, okay? And at the very end, I remember the Lord just really on my heart said, you have to tell this man about Jesus Christ. You have to tell this man. And I remember getting into to a tractor, climbing in and just looking at him and going, dude, you need to know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. I want to make sure that you know him. So if you pass away, you know Jesus Christ, but not only that, that you can live a life of abundance in Jesus Christ and who he is, man. And the guy looked at me with a straight face and said, I'm all right, I'm good. And, and I remember just going, no, no, you need to know Jesus. And I didn't know that I was just laying down foundation for somebody else to come along. And within a year and a half, shows up at a good friend of mine's house to him and his wife and says, I know there's something different about you and I want to know who this Jesus is. I want to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. We never know who we're going to be. We never know if we're going to be the person who is the one that is going to be telling. We don't know if we're the person that's going to be watering to say, listen, th this is who Jesus is because of our overflow of how we're living in Jesus Christ. Not by following the world. When we get that mixed up, that's when people get that bad taste in their mouth. And I have to be honest because there's times where people can look at my life and go, that overflow is not Jesus. That overflow is the world, okay? And, and you're probably wondering, man, we're even going to talk about the title. Well, the title is follow. And that's, that's the whole thing. How are we following Jesus Christ? And Jesus says this, in John chapter 8, verse 12. 
he says this, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Now, let's just slow down because there's different definitions of words today, right? So if I say, man, you need to follow. All right, I can follow. I like to follow people. I follow people on Instagram. I follow people on Facebook. You know, we were talking about that in the office. Well, what does it mean to follow? Why would you follow somebody? <clears throat> and a lot of times, the reason why we follow somebody is because we have the same likes. We have the same interests. We think that they're trustworthy, okay? We see that the, the character, the, the outflow, okay, of the choices they make, that, nah, that guy has pretty good character. That gal has pretty good character. I'll, I'll follow them. I'll check that out, okay? So, now, if I, and, and I'm going to use this as a silly exaggeration because sometimes we in the world can be silly, can't we? Okay? But I got to use this because I know hopefully nobody will be offended. If I follow Mickey Mouse on Instagram or Facebook, okay, and I know everything about Mickey Mouse, I know what he likes to eat. I know where he goes on vacation. I know the fun things he likes to do with his kids. I know all these different things about him. If I showed up at Mickey Mouse's house, is he going to know who I am? Nah, not at all. Now, I know everything about him, I know, but he does not know me. And that's the definition of this day and age that we have a follow. Okay? I'm following him, but I'm not having a personal reaction with him because I, I, I still want to be at an arm's length. I still, I still want to do what I'm going to do, right? Because we're our own person. That's what the world tells us. We, we are to be leaders. We are to be revolutionists. We are to change these things, right? That's what the world says. But Jesus is saying, sometimes he says, he says follow me. Now, get this. If you follow Jesus... As if he was a person on Instagram or Facebook, we got a rude awakening. Because when we go to meet him, he's going to say, I never knew you. Yeah, you might have you might have knew my name. You might have done healings in my name. I never knew you. Because you never had a personal, personal relationship with me. I mean, that hits deep to really think about. How, are you at an Instagram following of Jesus? Are you in a personal relationship of following Jesus? And that's what we need to be. And, and man, look at this. Jesus is, is, is saying some bold claims right here, okay? Things that are really rocking the people in his day and age, their world, 100%, okay? Because I want to slow down just a little bit. In this one little piece of Scripture, there's so much more to it. Because we know that the children of Israel, they were following Moses, who was following the Lord through the wilderness, right? And the Lord came up, and he was as a, a fire, as a light, and they, that's what they followed, okay? Or as a fog, and that's what they followed. And so it, it was such a deep thing to the children of Israel, of this fire, that they didn't want to forget, okay? They had different things, different kind of monuments not to forget who Jesus was and what he did. And all through the Bible, through the Old Testament and the New Testament, we see these, these uh, different symbols, okay? And so there is a symbol at the time of Jesus' life in the temple of these lights. And these lights are representing what the children of Israel walked through as they were following Jesus as that pillar of fire. And they're all around the temple. And Jesus says this one verse, and it puts the Pharisees and the Sadducees right on their head. He says, I am, I am the light. He's saying, I am God. Now, Jesus isn't saying, I'm a good person. Jesus isn't saying, I'm a prophet. Jesus isn't saying, I'm a Bible character. He's saying, I am God. And a matter of fact, God sent me to tell you that I am God, that I am. Now, 
that phrase, we could just stop right there and go, oh, yeah, he said, I am, that's great. If we go back, and some of you might already even know where I'm going, if you go back to Exodus, and Moses is talking with me, he goes, man, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. What, what if they ask who sent me? What do I say? He says, tell them I am sent you. That's the importance of looking and saying, how many times in, right here in these chapters did Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the light. I am God in flesh form right here so you can see me, so you can know that I'm going to come as a sacrifice and die on the cross so you don't have to go through life alone, so you, so you don't have to live in your sin and in your shame and in your guilt. I take that all away from you. So if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, why are you still living in a pit? Why are you still living in your shame? Why are you still living in your guilt when he's giving you so much more? And sometimes it's a choice. It's a choice that you can choose to say, man, I know what, I know what Jesus did for me. I know he died on the cross for me. I know how much he loves me. So I, I choose not to live in this pit. I choose not to live in, in the shame and in the guilt and in, in the things that the devil keeps on trying to put on me. I'm not going to live in what the enemy has for me. I'm going to live in what God has for me, where he calls you blessed and he calls you loved. And then he comes to give you life in abundance. I'm going to choose to live in that. And it's a, cho- it's a daily choice. And off of that daily choice is what is going to build an overflow of your life that people are going to look back and go, man, that dude is just, that woman is just crazy for Christ. Why? Because it's an overflow of the choice of them living for God each day. It's each day. And, you know, the, the thing of, of, you know, we need to follow the Lord, right? We, we use that so loosely. Follow, follow, follow. You know, in this day and age, what I said earlier is that it's, it is, we talked about this, it's to be, um, the world is saying you need to be a leader. You, you need to be the one that is just blazing the trail. You, that's who you need to be. Now, think about it from a worldly standpoint. Every leader that you know of, aren't they following somebody? So for you to be a good leader, who are you following? And if you truly want to be a good leader, you have to be the best follower. Jesus Christ says that we are to be servants. Listen, if you're looking for different position, you must be low so he can be exalted high. If I am following Jesus Christ to the best of my humanly, my humanly, that's possible. And I, I want to even stop right there because that's not even the truth of it. I can't even do that. The Holy Spirit is a deposit. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he said that he was going to send a helper. So when he died on the cross, when we accept Christ as our personal Savior, we have the Holy Spirit that now comes inside of us. And he is the one that helps us to live for him daily. And when I am following the Holy Spirit prompting, when I am following Jesus, then the overflow is what comes. And that's when people say, what's different? What's different? What's different? What's different? It's nothing that I did. It's the Holy Spirit within me. Is, I, there is nothing good within me. Anything that you say that see as good is not from me. Pastor Bill taught me a long time ago when people say, oh, hey, good job, or, or you did good on this. It, it's never to say, oh, thank you. It's to say, praise the Lord. Let, let me give Christ his due first because it's nothing to me. It's him first. And then after that, I'll say thank you. To me, that's so important to really look at and to see and, and um, to understand. It's, it, I, am, I am nothing. The reason why I have to continually look at that is because I don't want to be prideful because I could become prideful in that and I don't want to be the other way and have a false humility and then actually have pride because of my false humility either. I need to be right in the middle and saying, Lord, it is all you because of what you did. It's nothing I did. You died on the cross for me so I can have the salvation and I need to be so in love with that because it's, it's more than just a word of salvation. It's an act of what he did for me. It's an act that even in the anguish when he's at the garden and, and he is, he's sweating drops of blood and he's crying out to the Lord, Lord, if there's any will, if there's any way that you take this away, that you would. And that's the thing to really look at. 
These words had bigger definitions. I'll, I'll leave you with these three things. Read, pray, and obey. Okay? And, and when it says to pray, I, I want to leave you with this. This is something the Lord has really put on my heart. And, I, and we're, we're actually closing out. And it's this. In Hebrews. The definition of pray, I think, is, is getting lost in our society and in our world. Okay? Because now in the world, if somebody says, I'm praying for you, it's, I'm thinking good thoughts for you. Okay? A new, new thing that we see is good vibes. I'm, I'm, I'm putting out good vibes for you. And I'm like, what is that doing, you know? Huh? Good vibes. I, I have no idea what that's doing. I, I, don't, I don't know. It do, doesn't have any weight, okay? And, and that's what I fear that's happening when, when we say, I'm praying for you. Because we're taking it from a world's definition, we're taking it from a people definition, and, and it's, it, it gets muddy. It gets, it gets muddied real fast. I was humbled when I was reading in Hebrews 4, 14, where it says, So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours, he understands our weakness. He understands our weakness, for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of grace, of our gracious God, there we will receive his mercy and we'll find grace to help us when we need it most. We have Jesus Christ is now at the right hand of the Father. He has went through everything that we could go through and yet still stayed sinless. He did not sin. He was a perfect sacrifice. He knows you're hurt. He knows your pain. He knows your confusion. He knows those things. And he's at the right hand of the Father as our advocate. And he's, he's talking to God saying, one, one of my, my children, one of my sons, one of my daughters is, is on behalf right now. I, I want to come on their behalf, God, because they're asking for these things. There's different things going on they don't understand. Lord, could you please come with them? And it says this, I, I don't want to miss this because it says for us. So let us come boldly to the throne of grace. I don't want to come arrogant, but I can come boldly. Now I think about that. If I looked at you and I said, hey brother, hey sister, I'm going to pray for you. And I just left it at that. How does that kind of feel? It's like, okay. All right, good. Have a good day, you know? Or that whole thing of, you know, how are you doing? Good, good. How are you doing? Good. Okay, good. But if I come to you and I say, man, listen, I am praying for you. You know what? Listen, I'm praying for you in a way that I'm going to come boldly before the throne of grace. I'm going to go to, to Jesus, who is at the right hand of God, who has been through any of our trial, any of our struggle, any of our pain. I'm going to go, I'm talking to him to talk to the Lord about your situation because it is real. It is real that when I pray, I'm not stop talking empty words. I'm going to Jesus Christ who died on the cross and now he sits at the right hand of the Father. That's who I'm going to. That's who I'm talking to. And I tell you what, if that doesn't kind of, man, if that doesn't wake you up, I don't know what will. Because Two different sides of it. The side of, of you being the hearer going, man, that's how you're praying for me? That I can go through this battle. I can go through this thing. But for the one that's saying, I'll pray for you, think about that. You're saying, I'll pray for you. That word, that definition, that word means that you're saying, man, I'm going boldly before the throne of grace. I'm going to Jesus Christ who is on the right hand of God and I'm, I'm telling him about this issue. Why, why are we not acting like a crazy mom that's going to a school board meeting saying, hey, you're doing wrong to my child. 
You need to do this. Just using this as an example. Not saying that moms are crazy, but some moms are a little overboard sometimes. But are we being that parent in a sense? It's a picture. It's an illustration. Are we being that person? Or are we just going, I'll pray for you. And then I'm just, I'm just going on with my day. I'm just doing my thing. No, sometimes we, we need to say, listen, I'm, 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 you need to know the definition. You need, you need, to, you need to know what I, I want to do for you, okay? I'm going to pray for you. But on the other side of it, how, how are we praying? How are we asking others to pray for us? Now, I want you to think about this in closing because I know I said in closing twice, that means a good Baptist preacher, I'll go for another 40 minutes. But the thing is, is this. There's a picture. We talked about Moses and, and the, the Israelites and their cross and they're going through. There's a moment where it's like the first battle happens, right? And Joshua went down and he fought. And Moses goes up to a high place, okay? And, and he's got Aaron on one side and her on the other. Maybe I said that wrong, but I'm just going to stick with that. And they're battling. And he's lifting the staff up. And as he's lifting it up, they're winning. And when it starts to drop down, it goes down. And let me tell you what, battles just don't happen quickly. They're a long thing. And, and he's getting tired. And in that process, two other guys come up beside him. And they help him hold it up. Israelites ended up winning the victory. I looked at that picture. I go, man, that's something for me to look at. I can't go through your battle. I can't take your spot. I can't put your shoes on in a sense. But man, I can lift you up in prayer. And if I get tired, I can look at other people around me and go, hey, listen, this, this brother, this sister is going through a battle like none other right now. Can you, just, can you join with me in prayer and pray over them, over the situation, over this fight, over this thing they have going on? Now, I, we got to slow down because we need to remind each other sometime too, hey, 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 when we pray, we're going to the throne of grace, okay? We're going to Jesus Christ who died for us. We're going to that one that loved us so much. And, and on top of that, we're going to the one that he loved us so much, he actually sent Jesus to come and die in the cross room. That's who we're talking to, guys. So don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Don't get to let's, let's not think of anything else. But when we are praying, we're going to the throne of grace. And we're saying, Jesus, Jesus, this guy's going through a battle. Can you be with them? And then for you that's going through the battle, why are you not asking for other people to pray for you? Sister, why are you not asking for other people to pray for you? Listen, we're not here to do it on our own. Well, what if they judge me? What if this? So what if? There's, there's times at church that happens where this actually happened at church and it blew me away. A person who goes to church, who prays for other people, Went back to get prayed for. Nobody prayed for him. You know why? Because they thought that that person was there to pray for other people because they, man, they must have it all together. They always pray for people. It was like, how did that happen? Sometimes we need to reach out and go, I know that you follow Christ. I know that you're a solid person for Christ, but man, how can I how can I go boldly before the throne of grace for you today? How can I pray for you? Or what can I praise the Lord with you about? What has the Lord been doing? Our, the testimony has been great. You know, because we get to praise the Lord. That, hey, this is how, this is a victory in Jesus Christ. And this is how it happened because of Jesus. Man, let, let's, let's get encouraged with each other. Let, let's pray for each other. And not in a way of just saying, man, I'll pray for you or, or that whole thing, a good vibe. But man, I'm going before the throne of grace for you. I need you to go before the throne of grace for me because I'm going through a battle, okay? Before I even did this message, I text somebody. I said, man, I, I, need, I need your prayer support. I need you to cover me like an aerial missile support and just pray for me to keep the enemy away so I can get my thoughts, so I can, I can, I can just think. And I tell you what, there is so much. When I look at that scripture, I go, man, this guy is going before the throne of grace right now. He's going on my behalf to talk to Jesus. And Jesus is talking to God. And he's saying, hey, protect this guy so he could get this together. And I'm, I'm humbled by that. I'm, I'm humbled that I even get to, 
to say the words of Jesus Christ because there is nothing good in me. It's all, all of Jesus Christ. So with that, know that Jesus Christ loves you with an unconditional love. I don't care what you've done in the past. I don't care anything. John 3, 16, which is a verse that we know so well, that Jesus, that God sent his one and only begotten son, that whoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus died for the world. God loved the world. God loved everybody, okay? And he, he didn't do it to, if it goes on further in the 17, he didn't do it to condemn the world, but that it would be saved, he wants you to know the joy and the peace, even in the struggle, even in the fight, even in the pain, you can have joy in Jesus Christ. And like I said in the beginning, listen, if you don't know Jesus Christ, today's the day of salvation. Today is the day for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. If you already know Jesus Christ, do you need to get woken up like me? Do you need to get woken up, woken up in a way of saying, hey, you know what? When you pray, you need to pray to the throne of grace. Hey, your overflow I mean, sometimes I need somebody to look at me and say, hey, your overflow sucks right now, okay? Hey, what, you're, what is coming out of you is not Jesus right now, okay? And sometimes we need to do that in a loving way to say, hey, man, I, how, how are you in Jesus? How can I pray for you? We need to be following him. It's an overflow. We need to not give in to the world's ways, but in the ways of what Jesus Christ has for us. So I want you to be encouraged. Today. I want to pray for you before we go. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the online church, Lord, for this group that comes together every week, and Lord, for the, the ones that are coming for the first time. Lord, I pray for those that don't know you right now, that in this moment, that they would fall on their knees and they accept you as their personal Savior right now, Lord. That, that they would just, they give you everything, Lord, because you're the true light, Lord, and there is no darkness within you. Lord, I pray for those that have wandered away, Lord, that we would know the truth in John 1, 9 that says that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us of, of all, unrighteousness, all unrighteousness, Lord, because you are the true light. Lord, for those that are just kind of dragging their feet, Lord, that you would put a fire within us that we would continue to, to serve you, to reach out for you, Lord, that the overflow would bring others to Christ, Lord, I thank you, Lord. I pray that you would use this in a mighty way, that you'd continue to use Pastor Gary in this church in a mighty way, Lord. Um, Lord, we just give it to you. We love you. Praise in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see hands his feet my savior on that cursed tree his body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by
Jesus. 